Hi everybody, it's Program Ranger Shay with Boy Scouts of America Capital Area Council here at beautiful Camp Tom Wooten in Bastrop, Texas. I'm sitting in the Indian Village by one of our really cool Cub Scout teepees and today I'm going to read you a story. It is the legend of the Indian paintbrush. For those of you in Texas, when you drive around in spring, you see a lot of these beautiful red flowers, and this is the legend of how those red flowers came to be. Many years ago, the people traveled the plains and lived in a circle of teepees. There was a boy who was smaller than the rest of the children in the tribe. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't keep up with the other boys who were always riding and riding and shooting their bows and wrestling to prove their strength. Sometimes his mother and father worried about him. But the boy, who was called Little Gopher, was not without a gift of his own. From an early age, he made toy warriors from scraps of leather and pieces of wood, and he loved to decorate smooth stone with red juices from the berries he found in the hills. The wise shaman of the tribe understood that Little Gopher had a gift that was special. Do not struggle, Little Gopher. Your path will not be the same as the others. They will grow up to be warriors. Your place among the people will be remembered for a different reason. In a few years, when Little Gopher was older, he went out to the hills alone to think about becoming a man. This was a custom of the tribe. It was there, there that a dream vision came to him. The sky filled with clouds, and out of them came a young Indian maiden and an old grandfather. She carried a rolled-up animal skin, and he carried a brush made of fine animal hairs and pots of paints. The grandfather spoke, my son, these are the tools by which you shall become great among your people. You will paint pictures of deeds of warriors and the visions of the shaman, and the people shall see them and remember them forever. The maiden enrolled a pure white buckskin and placed it on the ground. Find a buckskin as white as this, she told him. Keep it, and one day you will paint a picture that is as pure as the colors of the evening sky. And as she finished speaking, the clouds cleared and the sunset of great beauty filled the sky. Little Gopher looked at the white buckskin and on it he saw colors as bright and beautiful as those made by the setting sun. Then the sun slowly sank behind the hills, and the sun grew dark, and the dream vision was over. Little Gopher returned to the circle of the people. The next day he began to make soft brushes from the hairs of different animals, and stiff brushes from the hair of horse's tail. He gathered berries and flowers and rocks of different colors and crushed them to make his paint. He collected the skins of animals with the warriors, which the warriors brought home from their hunts. He stretched the skin on wooden frames and pulled them until they were tight. There he is, pulling the skins on a wooden frame. And he began to paint pictures of great hunts. of great deeds and of dream visions so that the people would always remember. But even as he painted, Little Gopher sometimes longed to put aside his brushes and ride out with the warriors, but always he remembered his dream vision and he did not go with them.
Many months ago, he had found his pure white buckskin, but it remained empty because he did not find the colors of the sunset. He used the brightest flowers and the reddest berries and the deepest purples from the rocks, and still his paints never satisfied him. They looked dull and dark. He began to go to the top of the hill each evening and look at the colors that filled the sky to try and understand how to make them. He longed to share the beauty of his dream vision with the people. But he never gave up trying, and every morning when he awoke, he took out his brushes and pots and paints and created the stories of the people with the tools he had. One night as he lay awake, he heard a voice calling to him, Because you have been faithful to the people and true to your gift, you shall find the colors you are seeking. Tomorrow, take the white buckskin and go to the place where you watch the sun in the evening, and there on the ground you will find what you need. The next evening, as the sun began to go down, Little Gopher put aside his brushes and went to the top of the hill. As the colors of the sunset spread across the sky, and there on the ground all around him were brushes filled with paint, each one the color of the sunset. Little Gopher began to paint quickly and surely using one brush and then another. So the paintbrushes were just there when he got there with all the perfect sunset colors. As the colors, as colors of the sky began to fade, little gopher gazed at the white buckskin and was happy. He had found the colors of the sunset. He carried his paints down to the circle of the people, leaving the brushes on the, sail, on the hillside. And the next day when the people awoke, the hill was ablaze with color of the brushes. For the brushes had taken root in the earth and multiplied into plants of brilliant reds, oranges, and yellows. And every spring from that time, the hills and meadows burst into bloom. I hope you enjoyed the legend of the Indian paintbrush. And now you know, in the spring, when you're driving around and you see these beautiful red and orange and yellow plants growing along the side, this is the legend that the Native Americans stole, told of how that came to be. Thank you for joining us at beautiful Camp Tom Wooten here in Bastrop, Texas. We'll see you here soon. Bye, Scouts.